in your current book, uh, Win Bakley, you say uh, Trump is the best persuader you've ever seen in action. Why do you think that? Well, it's partly because he has what I call a, an impressive talent stack. Is he aware that he has that? Yeah, very much. So he's very aware that he can yeah. persuade people, persuade people. Yeah. I mean, he wrote a book on negotiating. Right, I know. I so, so yeah, he's, he's very aware. If you ask him, he'll say he knows branding, and you can see it from his you know, Make America Great Again to his you know, red hats to, I mean, you just see it everywhere from the, from the Trump name. Uh, I mean, even his father changed the name to Trump, you know, a, a word of, that, you know, says success. It used to be some slight drove really? or something, I think, uh, originally. So you can see it in his family. You can see him, um, you can see in his technique. I mean, I could talk about some of the techniques he uses yeah. that would be invisible to the untrained. Yeah, tell so, me. So the, the best examples are his, what I call his linguistic kill shots, you know, his nicknames for people. When people try to do one against him, it's just something that rhymes and sounds funny, but it doesn't stick. You know, like they used to call him a Cheeto Jesus. And that was like bad persuasion because people like Cheetos and they like their Jesus. So it's not exactly the, right. the insulting nickname they hoped. Yeah. But when he says low energy Jeb, you can never see Jeb Bush the same way again. That's for sure. That's a reframe. Wow. Right. And it also, it's a, it's a magnet for confirmation bias. Anytime you saw Jeb, not being excited, you'd say, well, there's that low energy compared to, <laughs> compared to <laughs> Trump, who is so a, true. high energy. Crooked Hillary, same technique. In fact, all of his nicknames have the same, same architecture to them. That's how I know that it's not an accident. Um, that you knew there was gonna be something that came up during the course of the long campaign in which somebody's gonna say, hey, that thing Hillary, Hillary Clinton did looks a little sketchy. Yeah. So you're just automatically going to be drawn back to that nickname time over time <laughs> again. And notice how his nicknames can't be flipped to a positive. So somebody tried calling him on, on the Clinton side. They were thinking, let's call him Dangerous Donald because he might blow up the world. But his supporters say, danger, that's what we want. That's right. We want him to beat that's ISIS. True. We want him to drain the swamp. Let's, let's have some danger. But you can't flip crooked around to a positive. Low energy, there's no positive. To that's that. right. You gave another excellent example of that in your book, uh, Wayne Bakley, with the Rosa O'Donnell situation when Megyn Kelly asked him about women being fat. Tell the folks about that. I thought that was a, right. such an excellent point. So and keep in mind that what I'm looking for is consistency in technique. So I'm going to tell you about that one and then tell you how he used the same technique again. So during the, the debate, first Republican debate, Megyn Kelly said, what about your comments about women? And then she mentioned some bad things he said about women. So instead of addressing it directly or apologizing or saying, oh, I've improved, which would have been standard political stuff, his campaign would have ended that day. Right. Instead, he interrupts her and he goes, only Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Giant laugh. Now, now here's the thing. Yeah. He's, the, the people he was trying to convince then was his base, you know, the Republicans. And they did not like Rosie O'Donnell. Right. But more importantly, they all knew her and they could visualize her. And it took all the energy from the question, which was damaging, to his answer, which wasn't even an answer to the question. That's right. And suddenly the next day, all we're talking about is the answer. You've <laughs> forgotten the question, right? Not entirely, but enough. Right, yes. Same technique when he was on a CNN interview with Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo had this great gotcha question. It was as good as Megyn Kelly's. He said, the Pope recently had criticized capitalism. He, and he said, what do you say to the Pope's comments about capitalism? Now, the trap is you can't say bad things about capitalism <laughs> if you're running for president and you're a billionaire. Yes. And you can't say something bad about the Pope. What do you do? What does, president, what does candidate Trump do? He says, I would tell the Pope he should worry about ISIS taking over the Vatican. <laughs> Boom. That was it. What was the question? I don't remember. <laughs> he took us to this, this visual that's practically written, ready for a movie. You can see him coming over the wall of the Vatican, you know, yeah. with, with their swords and, and guns and stuff. And when you see he can do it more than once, you see technique. Yeah, you know, the first time you could have said, well, that was a, a lucky, lucky move. Right. But you see him do it over no, and over he's again. Excellent at that. Yeah.